of work. And I just remember Andy saying, Bo, this is going to make a great story one day if you don't quit. Um, there have been days where I have wanted to throw in the towel, like I know some of you have as entrepreneurs, but nothing good comes to those who quit. Um, I have a thing on my wall that says quitters never, um, quitters never win and winners never quit. And um, I believe we were born to win, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to win, and we're going to keep getting after it. And um, I got two kids. My son just turned 15 on Saturday, and my daughter, Maya, she is 13. And I have been married to my beautiful bride, my high school sweetheart, Carla, for 19 years. And uh, yeah, that's a little background about me. I love insurance. I got into this. A short story, my mom passed away 12 years ago on my daughter's first birthday. She had no life insurance. I had to put it on my credit card at 22% interest, and it was a nightmare. And so um, that's what drives me. That's my passion is I want to help other people not go through what we went through because um, it can be avoided if a person just takes out 50, 60, even 20 bucks a month, depending on what kind of policy you need to make sure your family's taken care of. So uh, that's a little background on me. That's my heart. And um, every talk I do, whenever I'm talking numbers and business, I tell people all the time, like, none of this matters if there's no activity following it. Same thing on the recruiting side. None of it matters. Like if Gara has that amazing talk and tells me about how to recruit, but I don't take any of the information, do anything with it, then it doesn't benefit me at all. So hopefully what we share tonight will really sink in and penetrate. Um, and then most importantly, that we'll actually do the activity. So before we get into the phone script, let's talk about number one. You got to have leads, people. Um, you, it's, it's part of our business. It's what we do. The lead is the seed. So in order for you to be able to have a phone script, you have to have someone to call. So I definitely recommend getting with your growing up line on a lead budget, investing in leads. And um, I always tell people, whatever's comfortable for you, stretch. So if 100 bucks is comfortable, stretch to 150. If 200 is comfortable, stretch to 250. Just put a little skin in the game and then stretch yourself because as you stretch yourself, you're going to want to put more effort and more work and you'll be more consistent. And for me, it's kind of like when I started my GMR and started getting leads, it forced me to work just because I'm accountable. I'm accountable for this bill that's coming in every single week. Um, and I'm not a big fan of owning anybody money. I'm not a big fan of being in a whole bunch of debt. I'm not a big fan of, you know, getting leads and not calling them. So that would be number one. When we start talking about dials, you got to have someone to dial. So invest in leads get the leads in the county. And one of the people that told me this, because Garrett talked about counting and schedule. So I'll just hit this real quick. I went to a training uh, with one of our training and they said, do you want to know how to write 10 grand a week? I said, yes, absolutely. Right. And they said, in order to write 10 grand a week, here's a couple of keys. You need to have a county where the demographic has a major highway that goes through it. Okay. And then in that county that you're running, typically you can do two or three counties but you want the median income to be around 45,000 to 75,000 a year. So when you're looking up things for us in Colorado, there's Denver. Now I don't want to put any dispersions on it because there are good sales in there, but there are certain areas that I just will not run in because everybody's on the social security card. And I know they need life insurance too, but my time is very important. And the uh, return on my time is not what I need it to be. So when you're running counties and you're setting your schedule, Make sure you look at those demographics because our products best serve middle America. We're not high income people or middle America people. And so that's where our products are best served. About 45 grand to 75 grand a year is our sweet spot for our term products and our final expense and even our IULs. Um, and there was a question that a person on my team asked me that double points for FNG is on life cases only, not annuities. I wish it was because I got some in the pipeline, but it's not. So uh, that's the situation we have there. All right. Um, so, Gary, I'll just kind of go through the uh, dialing, um, the phone script. And if you got any questions or if you want to hand me some objections of stuff that you run into common, we can kind of go back and forth and, and bounce off each other, however you want to do it. Let's do that, bro. Let's do that. Okay. So you do your full script. And then if I got some objections that um, at the end, we can do some some live role play. OK, got it. Um, a couple of things, too, on the script. Whenever you're starting, your intro is vitally important. The first 10 to 15 seconds, a person decides if they're going to let you get through the whole script. So how you intro is critical. What I mean by that is when I call Mike, you guys will watch it. But some people say, I'm calling just like you, Marcus. I, well, I don't know why they keep hanging up on me. But they'll say stuff like, is Marcus there? Is this Marcus? That's not what we say. Hey, Marcus or hey, Mike. Right. You got to do it word for word, kind of how we do it. Um, and I said this the other day, too. So it's not how you say it, it's not what you say, but how you say it. So with authority 
And then you also want to do when you're on your phone script, low and slow. So you're not real energetic up. Be, hey, is this Marcus? Or, hey, Marcus. Mm -mm. It's more, hey, Marcus, this is Mike. I'm getting back to you about that form you sent in requesting information. So uh, that's just a couple key nuggets that I think are very important when it comes to the phone script. That intro decides if someone's going to let you get through the rest of it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, Mike, if you want to do the ring, ring, I'll, 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 I'll ring, ring, and I'll buzz you if you want to kind of role play with me and you can give me any objections you want, or if you want me just to go through a regular one with no objections first and then hit objections, however you want to do it, bro, I'm good. Let's do it. All right, ring, ring. Hello? Hey, Mike. Yes, who's this? Hey, Mike, this is Marcus. I'm getting back to you about that form you had sent in, requesting some information on the final expense life insurance for Colorado residents. Now, Mike, my job is simple. I'm just the person responsible for making sure we get the information you requested out to you. Uh, Mike, they got me in your area doing some deliveries tomorrow, and I was checking to see, you still working or you retire? Um, I'm working, but I already have life insurance. What's this all about? What type of insurance? Right. Let me make sure I got the right person. So it had on here, Mike Guerra, um, and you had down here age 45. Does that sound about right? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So what this was, Mike, was a little <clears throat> you had sent in to get some information on the final expense insurance. And my job, like I said, is real simple. I just get you the information and what you do with it is totally up to you. Uh, what time are you normally home from work tomorrow? I can drop that off. Uh, six o'clock. But are you going to try and sell me something? No, no, no. My job, like I said, is to get you the information and answer any questions you had. I can't say anything if I wanted to. So, again, I got you over here at 1234 Main Street. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And on the card, I saw on here, Arcadia, and then you had her down here as age 44. Is there any reason you both wouldn't be there tomorrow about 630? I can get the information to you. She works nights. She works nights. Okay. Got it. Now, what days is she normally off where you guys are together? It have to be a weekend. Okay. Does she, does she have to be here? preferably just because I want to make sure that she understands it. And if she has questions, you know, when you guys sent in the postcard, hers might be a little different than yours. Now, when you say weekend, so she off Saturday, Sunday? Uh, yes. Okay. Normally I don't go this far out, but is there any reason you guys couldn't do this Saturday about 11 o'clock? I can swing by for a few minutes and get the information to you and Miss Arcadia. Only if you're quick. I promise you, bro. Not, a, not an issue at all. So that 11 o'clock will work for you. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So I'll put it down here for tomorrow at 11. Again, my name is Marcus and then write that down so you don't forget about me. OK, cool. All right. Good job. Good stuff. Thank you. Next. Thank next. You. He threw the kitchen oh. sink at me. <laughs> next. Next. Yeah. Good job. I mean, that's that's key because you 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 let me talk, but not really. And there's no pauses. What kills people is those pauses. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that was really good. OK. All right. Um, you want to do another one? Again. Yeah. All right. Ring ring. ring. Hello? Hey, Mike. Yeah, who's this? This is Marcus. Uh, Mike, I'm actually getting back to you about that little postcard you sent in, requesting some information on the final expense insurance, the one for Colorado residents. Oh, damn it. I've been called about this like three times. I, I understand. I, I, we Mike, already got this taken care of. Mike, I understand completely. And my job is to take it out the system so we quit bugging you. Now, the way we do that is by me dropping off the information and what you do with it is totally up to you. Are you still over there at 1234 Main Street? Yes, but Marcus, I just got a policy and we really don't. Like I said, three people have been out. The last guy was cool. And uh, I swear, I think we're, we're good to go. You could just you could cross me off the list. You definitely don't need to come out. I would love to. But for the calls to stop, they just asked me to bring it back to you and then I can notify them. So like I said, it's one, two, three, four Main Street, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's do this. I'll be quick since you already have something. Uh, let's swing by tomorrow. What time are you guys normally home from work, Mike? Three o'clock, but I'm not, I ain't getting nothing. I told you, I, I'm only doing this so you can get me crossed off your stupid list. Absolutely. That's not a problem. So I'll swing by tomorrow about 3.30. <coughs> Just do a quick review for you, and then I'll be out your hair so we don't keep bugging you. Is that fair? Fine. Okay. So again, write that down so you don't forget about me. My name again is Marcus, and I will see you tomorrow about 3.30. That's awesome. I, I hope everybody saw that, how 
how he didn't break. No matter what you do, oh, perfect, sweet. That makes my job even. Oh, real quick. Like he's using words that you that make all the difference in the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that that was really really good. Um, I thought I could could stump you, but I mean, no, <laughs> people can't really stump me either because I'm just I'm a you you're, you got to be a bulldog on the phone because like I said, most of these people. I'll give an example today, Aaron, brand new, went out there. Somebody came out last month, just got her Americo and we replaced it, saved her 25 bucks a month. And it's like, had she have bought that objection on the phone, you know, the, the lady was super thankful that, um, that she came out, saved her a bunch of money. I mean, just people, they, they don't want to deal with someone that's, that's trying to sell them. So their, their job is to get you to not be there Like you said, you did such a good job this weekend of saying that. So um, real quick, if anybody has, okay, Q&A, let's do this. Okay, okay. Jennifer Vosco, what does he drop off? The information. So there's nothing specific, Jennifer. The drop off is actually the postcard. And then if you wanted to, you could request some of the carrier like brochures and stuff like that. So that's what, when we say drop off, that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm just saying that so they don't think it's going to be a long, drawn out process, a long, drawn out presentation, because, you know, just think of think of when you let the Kirby guy in the house. Right. (laughs) The three hour presentation or the last insurance person they had at the house. They're thinking of all those bad experiences. So when I say drop off information, it, 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 it insinuates brief. It insinuates I'm going to be in and out and I'm not going to be a long time. Now we get in there, the conversation starts going good. And they were like, I thought you were going to be brief. Very rarely comes up. Once we connect and they like us, they don't care about the, the time frame. So that's what I mean by drop off. I'm trying to bring back the postcard that they filled out. Um, and then I might bring a couple of brochures like a CFG final expense or a move final expense or something like that to that effect. But I don't just give it to them. I want to talk to them because my job is to influence the process to get them to make a buying decision. So um, I'm very particular about that. And then like Mike said, a couple of things. I don't know if you guys saw. I'm acknowledging what they said by saying great. Sure. Perfect. Right. That's agreeable. So one of my managers always taught me that you need to learn how to say yes to people, say no to people by still saying yes. So by me agreeing with them, I'm sign, I'm kind of saying no, but then I'm ignoring it and I'm moving on. We call it aim. Acknowledge. Great. Awesome. Perfect. Right. My job. So I ignore it. My job is just to get the information you requested out to you. What time are you home from work tomorrow? And we move on. So those are a couple of key things. And then the thing that I think people miss too, Mike, is sometimes they'll be like, well, I'm saying the same thing, Marcus. But what happens is they're making statements. Yep. I just got to get it to you. That's good. But where's your question at? I just got to get it to you. Are you still at? I got to get it to you. You had it out here at age 65. Is that correct? So you, you got to make sure after you move on, your next follow-up has to be a question. It can be going back to the form. It can be, are they married or significant other? Whatever it is. But your question is critical because people are taught at a young age. If someone asks you a question, you do what? Answer. Question, right? So they don't know we're playing a game. So when they hit you with a statement, you got to follow up with a question because they're going to be engaged to want to answer you. And the question has to come or the response needs to come within two to three seconds. Because if not, they're hanging up on you. They might hang up on you anyway, but don't take it personal. But that's the key thing I think is important to point out on tonight's training. No, the best is when they, they hang up on you, you door knock them, you get in there, they're really nice, you get them a policy. And they're like, hey, remember that, that guy you hung up on? I do that after, though. Anyways, um, <laughs> but okay, so so here that, that was so good. Uh, uh, for me, and I, again, I don't know what you do if you ever get paused at the door, because when you do say you're dropping something off, um, you know, some of the things I do is uh, in their head, they're thinking they're getting like a packet. And, and you and I both know there is no packet for Susan Mary, who's 82 years old. She's on 19 medicines. No, no carrier has like, oh, Susan qualified. They think they're getting like a one size fits all insurance. So um, if you get stopped at the door, like I have the things I do, like I say, oh, I thought you were dro- just dropping something off. I say, oh, yeah, I got it on my tablet through COVID. Everything's gone digital. So I just got to connect to my hotspot real quick. Um, where's your kitchen table? Would you like me to take my shoes off? which is basically like, I'm coming in, you know, there's, th- there's, everybody has their things to, if they get stopped at the, I, I don't know, that's what I use. 
hey, everything through COVID, you just use COVID as an excuse for everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> through COVID, you know, I, I was going to have the pieces of paper, but they, they went digital, got to connect to my hotspot, takes like three minutes. Should I take my shoes off? You know, where's your kid? And I'm looking for the kitchen table like Davies, right? Um, right. So what do you, if you get stopped at the door, if that, that weird, awkward conversation, you know, some people let you write in, but you know, you've had some people that are like, they, 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 they poke their head out the, you know what I mean? <laughs> what, what are you doing there? So at the door, same thing. I'm just trying to do whatever it takes to get in. So like I said, my job was to get the information to you. Um, I'm not sure what information is accurate for you. So I just got to ask a few questions. Is it best we do this out here? Or would you prefer we come inside since it's cold? Like some, some to that effect, or if it's burning hot outside, I'm just trying to make any excuse. I like the COVID one, Mike. I'm going to steal that. Uh, that one I don't use, but I'm, I like that. That one gets us in the house. So COVID, would you like to do it out here inside? You know, it's hot. And the job is just to connect with them. We want to be in the house. We want to be at the kitchen table, but I'm giving them options. Instead of them just telling me, no, you can't come in, I'm giving them options. And these are all options that I know the answer to. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you talk to me outside because you're going to end up liking me. I don't care if you talk to me inside. Right. Because you're going to end up liking me and you're going to buy a policy from me. So the goal is to get in the house. But I'm asking questions that I know the answer to. Yep. And, and especially depending on where you live, like um, if it's like pretty cold, I've got my jacket in the car. But I always and you all know I wear shorts all day, every day, no matter what the weather is. So they see me out there in shorts. So I like, come on. What are you doing out here in shorts? You know what I mean? So I always act a little bit cold at the door. Jeez, it's cold out here. Come on, you know, they'll let you in like that. Um, or if it's hot in Texas, like in, if you're running in the summer, same thing. Hey, you want to do this out here and get attacked by mosquitoes? I don't care what that, you know what I mean? You go in the house. So, because um, I think a lot of people get stuck there too. And if they're awkward at the door, it's how you show up at the door. Because if you're awkward, then they, they don't let you in because they're they're like, this guy's awkward, I'm, you know, so um any so let's see i want to see if, uh any last <clears throat> things that you struggled with at the beginning so when you were first doing this number one how did you get good at it was it repetition was it trainings i mean a little bit of both and then how long was it just was it a certain amount of appointments that you ran was it when you started when you realized hey man half of these people don't have life insurance the other half that do have bad policies so it gives me that much more confidence. Like, I don't care what I got to say. I got to get in there because I know at the end of the day, my heart's in the right place and I'm going to help them. So right. wh where, what at the beginning did you kind of struggle with on that? And how did you overcome it? The uh, biggest struggle I had in the beginning was my schedule um, and being committed and consistent to my schedule. And the biggest thing I think would help me was just really sitting down and putting a set schedule together and then holding myself accountable to the schedule. When I did that, my numbers went up. Another thing I think is big too, because what we do is mental. It's not really physical. You know what I'm saying? We're not lifting bricks. We're not going down scaffolds. We're not doing any of that, but it's right up here, these six inches. So Albright, when I first started, I was already a reader. Like I know you guys can see the books, but I like to read anyway, but he really got me on specific books that would help me like go for no. Um, one of my favorite books of all time in the insurance game outside of what Andy has written. So if you haven't read the A Steps, Millionaire Maker Manual, Inside the Circle of You, read those, please. But next on the list should definitely be How I Raise Myself from Failure to Success in Selling by Frank Betcher. Phenomenal book. And what my man said in there really stuck out to me, Mike. He said um, there was a sales meeting. He was about to quit, but he was so embarrassed he didn't want to do it in front of people. He said, I'm going to stay to the meeting and then get my stuff afterwards. A top salesperson stood up and he said, I'm not better than anybody here. But my biggest thing is, is that I tell my story to more people every week than you do. And that was like, huh. I got to start telling my story about my mom. You know, you heard that part, but telling that story, I know that if I can tell that story to at least 15 people a week, I'll write 10 grand a week. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And then, and then, like you said, then it's, once you get in the door, it's game on, it's using your charisma. It's being funny. I mean, I could go story after story. Like I, I did, I did one um, last year. In a, in a trailer and the lady I had to go pee so bad which I always do because I'm drinking all this water and uh, she had no bath uh, door on there she was like a 78 year old lady smoking in her house and um, I was like there's no where's the door she's like oh it's not on there she's like I promise I won't come over uh, over there I was like that's your decision it, it don't matter to me it, you ain't going to be impressed anyway so it's all good <laughs> I said that 
<laughs> she started laughing. And then <laughs> like Davy said, once you get them to laugh and you connect, it opened the whole thing. So everybody, what I like about these calls, and I don't know if, if you agree, is some of the things I say, you can't say. Some of the things you say, you have to find what works for you. It's like the, the bowling alley. Like you got the, you got the bumper lanes. You, you got to stay in those lanes. That's the script. Everybody puts their own little, not flair, but they do it a little bit different, but whatever works, works, right? And so um, a lot of people try and be awkward or weird because they say they stay too scripty. And then people can tell on the phone, they're reading a script and they hang up. So for the new people that really don't know the script, how do you get good at it? How do you act like you're not reading a script? Did you practice on leads? Did you practice on people? Did you practice with your team? How did you do that? Repetition, 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 and don't practice on the leads. They, you, you bought it, you purchased it. It's like if you play basketball, right? You don't show up the day of the game and start working on your three-point shot. That should be done off the court. That should be done behind the scenes. And it's, it, it, it blows my mind. People will spend 150 bucks, 200 bucks or whatever. And that'll be the first time they'll actually say the script out loud. No, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. So in short, cause I know Mark's coming on practice before you show up to the game. The game is your dial session. Okay. So you need to practice with your spouse. You need to practice with your manager, preferably your manager, someone who can kind of critique you and say, Hey, you sound good, but you're a little too high. You sound good, but make sure you know how to close it down at the end. Is there any reason you wouldn't be home instead of saying, can I come by? <clears throat> Subtle difference, but it's a big difference. So get with somebody who's making sales, knows the phone script, practice with them. But practice is what I'm saying. In the mirror to yourself, listen to yourself. Here's another thing that will help you, your learning curve. Record your phone calls. Because mm -hmm. when I first heard myself, I was like, I sound terrible. You wouldn't let me come over. Oh no, right? So so listen to yourself, practice and pay attention to what you sound like on the phone and then ask yourself, would I let this person come over? And then until you can say, yes, I would genuinely let this person come over. You got to keep working at it. It's like working on your shot at the gym. You got to keep working at it. Um, and then there was one that they had asked. I'll, I'll hit this too real quick, Mike, if I can. She said, yeah. what do you say when they say they're in, in a hurry or they're at work? Because you will get that. And if you just let them go, they screen the call. So I'm just going to go right to the end. I'm not going to do the whole script. But they say, I'm at work. I can't take the call. Awesome. I'll be brief. What time you normally home from work tomorrow? I'm doing some deliveries in your area. Oh, I normally get home at 6. Perfect. So any reason you wouldn't be there at 630? I can drop this off for you. No, I'll be here about 630. Perfect. All right. Write that down. My name is Marcus. I'll see you tomorrow at 630. So you got to hurry. And then verify the address real quick if you can. Okay. <clears throat> that was good. I've got, dude, there's a, a gazillion questions on here. People are just lighting up the chats. Um, so I'm at work right now. Can you call me later? I can't talk right now. I think that one's a good, just call them later. I mean, at the end of the day, until they block you, then you dial from another number. But I, I don't know about you, but I was taught three dial sessions during the day on dial day. Like you, you dial in the morning, three mm -hmm. times in a row, boom, don't answer. Dial in the midday, three times and don't answer. The sweet spot is from like 6.30, 8.30 at night. Because mm -hmm. if you're doing final expense, because you know they're sitting at home watching Bingo or CNN, Fox News or ESPN. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. the, and then and then by the night time you call, they're like, who, this must be important. You know, some people on dial day, they call a lead twice. You know what I mean? Like, I think every lead, everything needs to be nine times that day. And then you do it. They eventually will answer you. You know what I mean? People give up on those leads. And some of those people that don't answer, it's for all kinds of different reasons. Like they just don't answer. Oh, yeah, we never answer on identified, all that stuff, you know. Um, right. But um, OK, so real quick, uh, I, we already kind of answered. Can you can you do one where they say we don't want it anymore? OK, I think we already went over that one. Still got to get it to you. Got to get you crossed off the list. Um how should you appear to be there at the residence? So I would say, how do you dress when you're going to your appointments, Marcus? Um, sh short sleeve, well, it depends on the weather, but assuming, right? Short sleeve, polo, button up, okay? And jeans, and then some nice tennis shoes to that effect. I don't put on the suit. I don't, you know, wear my rings. And my, I do wear a watch, but it's more toned down. It's not the watch I had over the weekend. So that's pretty much it. Perfect. Perfect. And we're going to do more later. We're going to do another one of these um, and we can even close it, but we do have Marcus on the call. So dude, that was, 
that was just, just about every bit as good as what you delivered on stage. I mean, um, I forgot the thing that you said about the sweaty booty, or is it the clammy booty? <laughs> Wait, which one was yeah. that? I, like, I'm yeah, like, so sweaty, sweaty palms, clammy booty. You know, you like making uh, sweaty palms, clammy out, booty. Because like, that phone is slipping out of my hands, your butt's all tight. Yeah. <laughs> Right on, right on. Well, hey, brother, I appreciate you so much. This call is recorded. We're going to get it out to everybody. And, um, you know, like I said, you guys could see Mark, Mar uh, Marcus has worked on himself a lot, killing it, making hundreds of thousands a year and helping a lot of people do the same thing. So thank you for being here tonight. And um, so with, without further ado, I get the pleasure to bring on somebody that um, has just been, made a huge difference in, in my life. I mean, the guy is just a I considered him to be my, you know, my personal mentor from afar, although he didn't know who I was for the longest because the company that we built just exploded and there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people at our level. So um, what's cool about where we are at the Alliance right now, we're, we're big enough where we're, we're, we're stable, we're crushing it, we're doing all that, but we haven't hit the hyper growth yet where we're going, where you have people come into your team and they just absolutely, like I said, you don't even know who they, you're growing so big that it just, the events are, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So luckily, like, I, I, I hope we never take it for granted, but we get to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with Mark at the bar, all these different places. And so he is just, he is unbelievable. He's going to be doing the, it is my favorite event that I've ever been to. I'd put it up against any Tony Robbins event, any Grant Cardone event out there. So um, love this guy. He's going to light him up. Mark, did you make the call? You know, I did, Mr. Guerra. How are you, buddy? Good? I'm good. Roll Tide. Let's get it. Roll Tide. Well, Marcus, that was outstanding. You know, again, Marcus did a great job at the live event. It was just so fun for me to just sit back here and watch him do that role playing with you, Mike, because you were giving him a hard time and he was just so calm and smooth. I just hope you listen to the tone of his voice more than anything. And it's just so great that you got people like Marcus in this company, a whole bunch of them all over the nation who have been doing this for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and they are willing to go ahead and take all of that experience and pour it into people like you at our events. So again, just real excited to be here. You also made me think, uh, Mike, when you were talking about hitting hyper growth and when things really take off. And uh, I remember I was in my uh, a couple of network mark companies that really exploded. Um, but I remember the biggest one I was in one of my most remarkable moments is, you know, I'd worked really hard and had a big team and it had spread all over the country. And it, it was in all 50 states, even though I'd only been to about 30 states at that point. And I was on an airplane. The gal was, you know, I was in first class. She was walking past me. She stopped and she goes, are you Marcus Etta? And I'm like, uh oh, did I do something wrong? And I go, yeah. She goes, oh, my God, I'm on your team. I can't believe it. That's so cool. I can't believe I'm meeting you in person. I go, oh, that's awesome. Where are you from? And she's like, uh, Montana. I'm like, no way. How long have you been doing the business? Great. Oh, my God. That's so good. Because last month I did $80,000 in team volume. I am so stoked. And I just, you know, we walked by and I just sat there and quickly calculating the comp plan. Here's a young lady I made about $8,000 off last month. I don't even know who she is. And I mean, when you get into that kind of growth, when you hit that tipping point and things just explode, that's when things get really fun. It's fun right now, but it's much more fun in hyper growth. And, you know, I really believe we are now starting to move this engine. You know what I mean? It's like a locomotive. It takes a while to get a locomotive going. But once you get a locomotive going, it's almost impossible to get the thing stopped. And that's kind of the direction we're headed right now. So uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the next live event we have coming up. I really wish, you know, there was a way to go back in time because I know a lot of the people who are your uplines, the people who got you in the business, if they could go back in time after they experienced national convention here in Dallas, I live in Dallas. Um, then they would go back in time and they would force you to go to the event. They would certainly push you to go to the event. I guess they can't make you go, but they would have pushed you a lot harder because what happened at the event was just so overwhelmingly powerful. So 
The bad news is there is no way to go back in time. The good news is, is we can learn from our past. And, you know, people who don't learn from their past are doomed to be failures and no one wants to do that. So we do have this very, very unique event coming up called The View from the Edge. I appreciate all the nice things Mike said about it. Um, you got to go to the website and check out the, the promo video for it. It just, it's, it, it was interesting. I talked to about 10 leaders in the Alliance today and they were like, man, thank God we have that video because it's really hard to explain this training. Here's the thing. Most all of the way a human brain works is based upon uh, giving an example of something else. I don't know how much you know about the legal system, but if you're in a courtroom, most cases that are done today, they will cite precedent. In other words, they're going to cite a case from the past. They'll say, okay, in 1984, in the state versus this, and they'll state a judge's decision in that case. So they're always comparing the current case they're trying to something from the past to convince the meet people in the jury or the judge that this case is just like that case. Therefore, you should rule in my favor. Well, when most people try to explain anything, think about it. A new musician comes out and you go, you know what? Um, they remind me a lot of you too, or they remind me a lot of this band. So we're always trying to explain something new and compare it to something old. Well, the problem with this event is there's nothing else like it. I mean, literally nothing else like it. So you can't say, oh my gosh, it's a lot like this. You just have to really take the time to explain it to them. So I'm not going to bore you with an explanation right now. I'll give you a couple of quick things. First of all, when we are in a classroom, let's just keep it real. How many of us remember being in grade school, middle school, high school, or college, being in a classroom and not paying 100% attention to what the teacher said? Can anyone remember not paying 100% attention? Certainly. We were, all, by the, I don't know if you know this, by the time you get out of high school in America, you spent approximately 14,000 hours in a classroom. Think about how we became programmed and conditioned. Because let's face it, guys, you need to pay attention every day in school. If right before each test, you crammed all the information in and you have good short-term memory, you could get straight A's and hardly pay attention in class whatsoever. So whether you learn that consciously or unconsciously, the truth is, for whatever reason, most people didn't pay much attention in school. Now you're sitting in a seminar and you want to pay attention and you have world class trainers like Marcus and they're there pouring this information out to you. And the amazing thing is most of you aren't really listening. You're listening, but you're not listening. Well, what we do at The View is we don't do classroom lecture style training. We entertain you. So think now about your favorite show on Netflix. What is your uh, White Lotus is a hot show. There's a bunch of all these hot shows. I don't care. Maybe it's uh, Yellowstone. I got obsessed with Yellowstone. I remember the first TV show I binge watched back in the day was 24 with Jack Bauer, Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, my God. And I watched an episode after. When you find a show that you find entertaining, can you not watch episode after episode after episode? And you're riveted to every moment. And then you can remember what happened seven episodes or nine. Now, you're not getting tested on it. You're not getting a grade for it, but if you find something entertaining, you are going to pay attention. Therefore, you remember something. Well, how can you do something? How can you take something you were taught and actually put it into action if you don't even remember it? So again, it's a really amazingly powerful way of training. Now, I've been doing Zooms like this with big teams in the Alliance all day long, and a bunch of questions came up. I just want to run some of this by you. People say, well, Mark, um, what do you say to someone? When would you introduce the view to them? So I said, look, I would talk in every presentation I do about we have an incredible training system. We have four live events a year. We do a lot of virtual stuff in between. But the bottom line is if you never sold insurance before in your life. It doesn't matter. Not only will we teach you exactly how to sell insurance at our four big live events, but we'll also teach you how to recruit and build a sales team if that's something you're interested in. And we're not going to have 
professors teaching you. We're not going to have people who don't know how to do this in actuality. We take the very best people in the world. As a matter of fact, the number one salesperson in the country, her name is Megan Wood. She's going to be teaching and training at the next live event that we're doing. Next thing you can say is, you know, when someone goes, well, you know, I want to go, but I'm busy or I, I have another obligation. It's like, okay, I get it. But I just want you to understand this. These four trainings, they're all very unique and very different. So if you don't go to this event, you won't be able to reattend this event for over a year. Now, I just want to make sure you understand what's going on, because I know the kind of success that people are going to have coming out of this event. And I'm telling you right now, if you see the people all over your town, all over the, the group are having explosive momentum. Things are going crazy because a lot of people are going to have huge breakthroughs and really turn a corner and make a lot of money after this event. And then you can't attend it for another year. I mean, if you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. But I just want to let you know if there is any way you can get out of what you're doing, I strongly recommend it. Because here's, here's another thing I say, listen, if I didn't like you, meaning if I didn't believe in you, if I didn't think you had what it takes to be a champion, then I wouldn't push you to go to this event, but I don't want you to have to wait a year to get this information. Guys, you cannot have these kind of conversations with people if you're not having one-to-one -one conversations. If you think you're going to bunch people on a Zoom like this and do a group pitch and that's going to be effective, you are sadly mistaken. It's taking the time to either meet someone for coffee, meet them for a beer, have a phone call, do whatever it takes. I'm talking about the people on your team and let them know why they need to get to this event. And you've got a built-in urgency meter because the price goes up after Friday at midnight. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't be selling plenty of tickets because the price isn't going all the way up after Friday at midnight. It's still going to be a discounted price, but this is going to be a lowest price someone can possibly go. And I'll also tell you this, Mike, Dan, Nick, uh, Rachel, they can all tell you this. I have never done this event at that low of a price. Andy wanted to make sure we had everybody humanly possible. They had no excuses, no reasons not to attend. So he decided to offer it at the lowest price we've ever offered it to make sure we have max. Now, that's all well and good. Andy set us all up for success. But if you don't take advantage of that, then, you know, what's the point of him offering that amazingly low offer? And it is 100 percent going away at Friday at midnight. So you have got plenty of time still to make these one on one calls and answer their objections. And if someone doesn't have the money to go, I mean, oh, my gosh, guys, it's like, think about that. If they think they don't have the money to go, those same people are going to find the money to go out and party. They'll find the money to go to some concert. They'll find the money to do all these other different things. It's like that's where we need to have what we call tough love and go, guys, you, this is not a seminar on, um, you know, um, Mars are from men, women are from Venus, so you can have a better relationship. This is not a seminar on how to be able to crochet a sweater. This is a seminar on how to make a ton of money, how to be a great leader, how to build an explosive sales force. And this could alter your financial destiny. So, I mean, you can't afford it. I, I'm not going to accept that. You can't afford not to go to it. What you, you can't afford to it. That's what my mentor used to say. I remember back in the day when I first started doing presentation, she goes, man, you need to buy a suit and tie. And I'm like, I can't afford it. And he goes, you can't afford not to have it. It's again, just like you just saw Marcus overcome every objection, right? That was for setting appointment. If we got another top leader in here, if we got uh, Mark Hutch or if we got Stephen Davies here and we role played closing a sale, you'd see the same thing. They overcome all the objections. They don't put an ounce of credibility into any objection a customer is giving them. Same exact thing when you're closing a sale for the business, for, uh, for the, the uh, events. You have got to be aggressive with this, guys. I said it at the event. If you don't push your people, most of them will have average results and stick around and be average or end up quitting because they're not getting the kind of results they want from the business. If there was one event all year long that you bet on and you push like crazy, it is 100% definitely this event. So I just want to make sure you are crystal, crystal clear on that. 
Again, you can go online. I know they got the video that they can show to you. Whatever it takes, get the assets you need. Talk to your upline, ask for their help. But whatever you do, do not ignore the opportunity to sign people up for this event over the next 72 hours. That's why they want me to be on the call right now. Next Tuesday is too late because that window of opportunity is already over. So when a window closes, it closes. Don't let this window close on you and your team. Make sure you get as many people registered as fast as you possibly can. So, Mike, I'm going to toss it back to you. I know you got a few other things to say before the Zoom is over, but <clears throat> thanks, as always, for trusting me and giving me the opportunity to be a part of this. And I'm just telling you point blank, I'll say one last thing. The people who don't go to this event are going to regret it. If you can go and you just, for whatever reason, choose not to, you're going to regret it. This is maybe going to be the best one of these I've ever done, and we have done some amazing versions of this training. I have never been this excited to do this event. So with that, again, I'll pitch it back to you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, you guys, I'll just, I'll tell you this, the top leader that I've, I've had on, on my team in the previous business and, and here, uh, Dave Fleming, you guys know him as Panda. I, um, he had his own objections why he couldn't go to his first view and long story short, he sold his TV. He sold his flat screen 60 inch TV to go to his first view eight years ago. And that's when we decided, you know what? We, we were already great friends, but we can't, we became best friends and we decided we're going to not just do business together. We're going to do life together. Whatever we do, we're sticking, we're sticking with each other. And man, we had absolute breakthroughs. So here's the way I always looked at these events and this type of business. I learned real early, if you empty if you empty your wallet into your mind, your mind will overflow your wallet. Let me say that again. If you empty your wallet into your mind, your mind will overflow your wallet. So let's say you're brand new and you don't know anything about insurance or building a team. <clears throat> let's just hypothetically, let's see that just like there's leads, just like we know we're going to make five times more than what we spend on the leads. You know, some people are going to do way better, like a hutch someone that's skilled and been in it for a long time, maybe someone that's a rookie might make three or four, all right? With the business, we've got national convention, we've got the view, we've got family reunion, and we've got breakthrough. Let's hypothetically say the average ticket cost is, let's just, it's, it's cheaper than this, but let's say it's 400 per event. So that's 1,600 per year, okay? Then you've got flights, round trip flights, 400 bucks, okay? There's another 1,600, 3,200. Then you've got, um, then you've got maybe a rental car. Well, most of the places we're doing in major cities now that you don't need a rental car, but let's just say on the safe end, you've got to spend 4,000 per year at the max. If you want to get drunk at the bar and stay at the nice place, you could do it cheaper. You want to eat out at the max. You spend 5,000 a year on your education. That's the most you can spend, which you can write off. Hello, ding dong. You can spend 5,000 per year on your events. We call it Alliance University. But the skills that you learn the next from that year, the next year, put an extra 90 grand in your bank account. I mean, I don't know if you guys understand math, but who wouldn't spend five to make the 90? I didn't know anything about insurance. My first six months in the business was just learning, learning how the products, learning the business. I knew a little bit about building, all that kind of stuff. But our first full year, we made well over two hundred thousand last year, and uh, I probably spent. I had some. I had some expenses to that, but not nearly what we made. You know what I mean? I probably spent five thousand, seven thousand, and I bought tons of extra tickets because I knew I was buying tickets with the intent of growing my team to fill those tickets. So it'll always come back tenfold, y'all. Don't be cheap on this stuff. Don't be cheap on yourself. You got, you got to get there and you got to bring everybody on your team there. The one, if you're, if you have any regrets in your life, it's going to be sitting in the event when Mark's doing a skit and you have a great friend or a really good friend sitting at home that they're dealing with something and you were weak about getting them to the event. And you were like, this skit is what she needed and she's not here. And there's no way you can explain it to someone. <clears throat> it's like explaining what a flower smells like. There's, how do you explain that? You've got to smell the damn flower, you know? So <clears throat> prices go up at midnight, uh, uh, 11 o'clock central time on Friday. Tickets are only $2.99 now. 
I've spent three ninety nine to four ninety nine every single year I've gone when I was making ten times less money. Okay, and it was worth it. And I, it was the it was the best event I've ever been to by a mile, and it's not even close. So if you want to get registered, here's how you do it: go to thealliance.events.com, thealliance.events.com, log in, go get your view ticket. We'll figure out the hotel. We'll figure out the rental. We'll figure out all that stuff later. You've got three months to go out there and sell insurance. If you sell one policy for a hundred bucks a month in the next three months, if you sell one policy, it pays for your ticket. It pays for your round trip flight. It pays for your hotel and some, some food and some booze while you're there. I mean, let's come on, let's be resourceful and let's get, there's no reason why you can't go. Don't just get a ticket for yourself, get a ticket for your team as well. Um, I've already bought six myself. I'm getting ready to go buy another six or eight. And, uh, I mean, I'm just expecting to have, uh, I mean, we're going to have more people at the view than we had at NACON. <clears throat> I was sitting there at NACON thinking, man, this is good, but it, it's not a zit on the butt of the dog with the view is I'm just telling you guys have not seen Marcus at unleashed those who know, no. And those who don't, you have no clue. So I can't wait for this event, the Alliance events.com. We're going to be the team that blows not only the, the what we're getting ready to do, it, it's not even an alliance. Integrity is going to be flipped on its back. They're all going to be wondering what we're doing. All right. We got the best of the best that came on board with Andy's vision and with Mark Asetta. We have the re recipe for success. The missing ingredient is your desire. You can't do this without desire. So we love you. We'll see you at the view. Let's get it. I'm going to get the recording out. Uh, tomorrow morning. Love y'all. Have a good night.